Today's uh, lecture, the topic of, of today's lecture will be um, uh, Rook Endgames by Akiva Rubinstein. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I was hesitating how to how to spell his name correctly in English because in Polish, where I'm in Poland, uh, where I'm from, in Polish language, we say always Rubinstein. But I know that uh, you know. I think in here in the US, uh, it says it's, it should be spelled Rubinstein or Rubinstein or something like this. <laughs> so uh, I I want to use one form. Uh, so probably I'll stick with the one that I learned, you know, as a kid and <laughs> how he speak in Polish, Rubinstein. Uh, but uh, <laughs> sorry for the confusion because I mean it's more natural for me to speak Rubinstein. Uh, so that that's why basically that's the only reason why I would choose this this way. Um, but you know it's the same player, same great uh, player uh, who uh, Rubinstein. So Rubinstein. Okay. Um, anyway. Uh, so we know who we are talking about. He's the same great uh, player, uh, Akiba Rubinstein, Rubinstein, same thing. Um, Polish grandmaster uh, from early 19th century, uh, 20th century, I'm, talking, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, he was one of the pioneers of modern, basically, endgame play. And. Uh, mm, Okay, so you know what? Instead of Rubinstein, I'm just gonna be talking Akiba because uh, Akiba, oh, it will not be any confusion with the name Akiba. <laughs> uh, so I will uh, maybe use this <laughs> then. Okay, let's get started. So I'm gonna prepare several games on Rook and games. Uh, <clears throat> um, in, uh, in which uh, Akiba Rubinstein uh, basically uh, performed, uh, you know, one. I mean, like one of his finest, let's say, rook end games, and uh, he, in those games he presented uh, kind of like pioneer ideas, uh, I think, at the time. And uh, there's a lot to learn from because modern, let's say, end game theory and very often supported by engine anal analysis uh, supports his choices. Sometimes it doesn't, of course. You know, it's chess evolved as a game, but uh, nonetheless, uh, his contribution to a chess end game uh, or like chess end game theory or chess end game, let's say, you know, knowledge and so on. Uh, was immense, and uh, even though maybe at some point, uh, you know, he at some positions could have played better according to engines, of course, you know, everyone makes mistakes, right? Uh, but uh, his, uh, let's say, overall general level of playing how he played rook end games is was pretty much for the times astonishing, and still, uh, I think, is um, you know, um, very, very um, impressive even nowadays after checking with engines and so on. And um, so let's get started. So the first game I want to talk about is uh, one of the, let's say, simplest rook end games. Let's start with, let's say, simpler ones, then we're going to go to more complex ones. Uh, Akiba Rubinstein versus uh, Emmanuel Lasker. So, um, we'll wait. Uh, yeah, so basically, uh, after you know, uh, in, in very interesting middle game, we got to uh, some position like this. Uh, you know, Akiba Rumishtein was winning here already earlier, but he transposed to he transferred to the rook end game, uh, feeling that his skills are you know, um, I mean, sufficient to win this. And this is the first position I want to talk about uh, because. In this position, uh, there were uh, right now uh, Akiba uh, had choice whether to play rook f1 or play king f2, and um, I think it is very instructive, especially for the times uh, that uh, he played with king f2. The idea of king f2 is basically yes, he gives away the f2, uh, the b2 pawn by you know, rook d2, king f3, rook takes b2, but he gets to play rook a5, and he still retains extra pawn, and. Um, he, he keeps his rook active, which is the most important, and uh, forces black rook to be extremely passive on b7, because b7 is for otherwise pawn is just false. So this was a very important, you know, idea here for uh, that uh, Akiva Rubinstein demonstrated. Because what is the problem uh, with move rook f1? Seemingly rook f1 is very natural move, just you know, uh, we are checked, we don't want to lose the pawn, we just play rook, rook f1, and uh, you know, we should win. 
And yes, white should win this game anywhere, even after this move. But this is would be not a, a, this wouldn't this wouldn't be such a great uh, move from technical point of view. Right now, after rook d2, it's black rook that's very active. Even though white uh, retains two extra pawns uh, for now, uh, let's say after rook b1, they, you know basically um, with such passive rook, uh, white would have very hard time, I think, of winning it. And yes. Um, Two extra pawns should be sufficient still, but uh, it wouldn't be, you know, the most technical way of playing it. And uh, here, uh, Lagas Laska will have had definitely some chances to save it. And um, okay, rook e2 wouldn't still work yet because of this uh, would transfer to rook a pawn and game and white wins obviously. However, uh, there could be possible to play with a5, a4, maybe bring the king a little bit forward. Um, instead, let's say I don't know, a5 looks interesting, you know, to you know maybe gain some we see some space. Maybe king e6 and uh, or maybe king d6. All moves are possible. Also, black king is active, rook is active, white pieces are not active. Uh, so uh, that's why it's very important to play this position not rook f1 but king f2 to activate the king, give up, give the one of the extra pawns, and uh, now rook a5 activate the rook and. Uh, since now uh, his, uh, I mean, Akiba's technique was brilliant. Play rook B7, after rook B7, rook A6, very nice move. Uh, cutting the king on the sixth rank just in case. Uh, right now, uh, the basically those pawns supported by the king are simply going forward. There is no way, uh, pretty much, to uh, to stop them. And uh, black can be black is forced to defend defend passively with the rook only on the seventh rank, and. Uh, there is no way to activate this rook even because at then a7 pawn falls and with its entire position. So let's see how the game concluded. King f8, e4, slowly pushing both pawns forward. King rook 7 h4, king f7, just g4. Everything goes smooth, very smoothly forward. A king f4, king e7, h5, h6, uh, finding king f5, king f7, and e5. There is no way of stopping that. There is pretty much no way of stopping that. Black will have tried maybe put pawn on g6, but then. Even after trade of those pawns, would, it wouldn't matter a lot, uh, at all. And uh, right now, here rook b7, rook d6, uh, one of the say good ways of to play this. I, I, the threat is, of course, right now even rook d7. To uh, let's say if black plays move like uh, this, already rook d7 would win the game because after this, this is, uh, we transfer the pawn and game, and king g6 simply wins the wins here of those pawns on the queen's uh, king side. So that's why uh, you know uh, King E7 was played. Simply te move, tested him once, and now uh, you know. Okay, he, he, maybe it was time trouble. I don't know. It was more than 38. Possibly it was time trouble. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But the position is anyway winning. Rook C6 here. Finally move A3, and here uh, I think because they reached time control, White simply uh, Black simply resigned uh, because uh, there is simply nothing uh, to to do here with black. Basically, uh, if the king moves from f7, the king goes forward. Uh, rook cannot move, leave the 7th rank because then uh, rook c7 follows. And if a5, then rook a6. And then, uh, you know, for instance, after a5, rook a6, uh, pawn is attacked. If group b5, rook goes rook to a7, for instance, and uh, the game is also, also decided. Uh, so uh, yeah, so very nice end, end game play by Akiba, and um, you know this idea uh, I'll show once again of giving away the the two extra one of the two one of the extra pawns that he had to uh, activate his pieces and king and rook. Just look at the final picture in this position. Uh, for this position, yeah, this position, king is extremely active. Rook is extremely active, right? It's something like this would never have occurred if the white play here rook f1, rook d2, rook b1. Look at those pieces, they are extremely passive. So this was a uh, very nice uh, here play by uh, Rubinstein. All right, uh, so this was the first game I wanted to talk about. Uh, next idea, next game I wanted to talk about, um, I prepared for several of them, I don't know which one uh, to start with, to be honest. Um, uh, let's start with the classic. Let's start with the classic uh, game: Janowski versus uh, Rubinstein. And do you guys know this game? Uh, I'll maybe put the position before actually we got to the rook end game. Oh, sorry, my screen. Um, before we got to the before we get to the rend, uh, rook end game. Uh, however, um, okay. Do you guys know this game? Know this position? Okay, 
Yeah, uh, so this is, uh, okay, some of you know the position, uh, some don't. Uh, anyway, this is kind of famous game. Uh, one of the, I think, famous game, most famous games to be honest by Rubinstein. Uh, basically, uh, the, uh, the last move was queen takes e4. So the point is that in this position, uh, black is uh, somewhat better, I would say. Uh, not 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 too much because you know the position is pretty much uh, balanced, uh, equal material. Uh, the only advantage that white, sorry, black has is you know uh, pressure on the f file. Actually, we can hit the board to be honest. Uh, flipping the board makes sense because we're interested from black's perspective. Uh, black, uh, you know, has some pressure on the f file. Pawn f3 is potentially a weakness. But uh, black is, but on the other hand, white is very solid. It's, there is no kind of clear way to, um, to you know, to make make progress. And here, uh, uh, Rubinstein came up uh, with a very interesting maneuver. He played with queen d8. Can you guys, can you guys, uh, tell me in chat what is the idea of queen d8? Correct. Queen d8. Uh, queen b8. Queen a7. Correct. That's the idea. Um, queen g5 is also possible, but um, this is uh, or queen f6 also is possible. Totally correct. But idea of Rubinstein here was something totally different. He played queen d8. Idea of queen b8. Queen a7. Uh, sorry, not queen c8. Queen c. Queen b8. Queen a7. And bring this queen to this diagonal. And basically, a queen joins the game with c5, for instance. It goes from this this way. Um, so this is the point. Queen d8. In the game for queen g4, stopping queen g5, I guess uh, Janowski was thinking that he, queen g5 was, uh, you know, Rubinstein's idea. Uh, but he goes the other way around. Queen uh, b8, king g2, queen a7. Very nice idea. And uh, finally, uh, you know, queen comes to b4, queen gets activated. Look, at first it was queen on d7. He wasn't doing much. Right now, with this maneuver, queen puts a lot of pressure on was pawn on the queen side. Potentially, maybe the idea is to play a5, a4, to uh, press, put some pressure here, or maybe play b5 at some point as well. Depends on what, on what white does, of course. Um, also, we can just, but probably a5, a4 would be my guess. Um, and um, so I, I know it's about, mostly about rook end games, but uh, queens will be traded at some point, and I could not help myself. I just had to show this idea of queen a, queen b8, because uh, it's classic. Uh, all right, so uh, rook e2. Uh, right now, rook f6. Uh, queen d3. Uh, king g8. Uh, regular move. Also, I, I thought was possible to start with. Queen c3, a5. Uh, so finally, queens. Uh, white decided to trade the queens, and which makes perfect sense. Uh, takes takes. Uh, c3 takes takes. And um, you know we got to this rook endgame. So uh, what what should black do in this position? Okay, some suggestion in G5. Uh, there is suggestion of uh, Rook A8, and uh, yeah, and Rook A8 again, Rook A8 again, B6 stop C5. Uh, okay, so uh, three such three ideas. Idea is to play G5, and idea is to play B6, and idea is to play move Rook A8. So uh, let me start with uh, G5. G5 is incorrect, uh, in my opinion. Uh, g5, you uh, are not creating any serious, any serious threats on the queen side by playing uh, king side by playing with g5. And instead, uh, you have to uh, basically play. Uh, I mean, 
After rook g5, I'm gonna play, for example, rook a2. And I'm gonna, out, I'm gonna control the a file, and I'm gonna uh, play, uh, you know, uh, against this pawn a b7. You know, I'm gonna put uh, lots of pressure here on, on your queen side. And the only open file, white would seize uh, control of. So that's why uh, g5 is a mistake. So is b6, but idea of b6 I like a little bit more because uh, b6 I, idea is to stop move c5, and this is this is a general in general is a good idea. And uh, but but again after b6 I'll play again rook a2 and I would control the open file. Therefore in this position uh, the best move is to play rook a8 as many as many suggested. Uh, however uh, rook after rook a8. Um, after rook a8, uh, uh, no, g5, then g4, okay, hold on, uh, what are you doing? Just, I'll take, I just, you're just, I'm just taking it, and uh, you're not getting anywhere with that. Uh, so, uh, rook a8 has to be played, and uh, the point is, uh, the point is of rook a8, uh, I, do, I do rook a8 and then b6, stop, okay, correct. But, okay, so uh, right now, after rook a8, let's flip the board and see what would you play with white. What is that? Okay, black is slightly better, right? It's clearly still black all the time, is everywhere slightly better. At least maybe, maybe not kind of from... Maybe engines don't show it or something, but let's say from human perspective, black is slightly better. It's difficult to play this position with white, because black, white is forced to be constantly on the defensive side, and, uh, you know, it's difficult uh, to, to play. At least this, this is my feeling. Uh, C5, yes, uh, C5 is the best move. And basically, idea of c5 is to simplify the position. Open the c file, activate those rooks. Correct. c5 is the best move, and uh, that's why uh, you know this was the best defense here for uh, this flip again. Uh, this was the best defense for white to play move c5, open uh, c file, and uh, attack uh, maybe play rook c7 and so on. However, uh, in this position, uh, Janowski, I guess, didn't feel any danger because seemingly there is no any danger yet. Like, there is nothing attacked, there is um, no even one single threat, and, uh, you know, there is simply, it may seem like there is no rush to, you know, play anything uh, concrete, and it's totally, and also a valid point. There is no need to play c5 just yet. But the thing is, or like, you know, to force equality, to force some equalizing, let's say, ideas, in order to you know get the game uh, you know more even uh, because uh, seemingly there is no need right because thing, uh, things are looking still quite decent for white there is no uh, like in rush to do it it may, it may seem so in the game for king h3 and uh, of course right now we play move b6 as uh, some of you suggested uh, idea is to obviously b6 uh, to play move uh, to stop c5 pretty much stopping c5 and if c5 is stopped, right now black controls the open file, open a file, and will try to invade with rook a1 and so on. Pawn f, uh, on f3 also is a weakness. Pawn b3, both pawn on the queen side could become potentially a weekend, uh, weekend a little bit as well. But mostly, uh, you know, we try to at first advance the rook and slowly, gradually improve our position. Serve the rule of do not hurry. Uh, king g4, uh, so this is a little bit a weird maneuver by uh, Janowski here, but it's still quite okay, it's still quite okay to play like that. Rook a1 obviously, activate the rook, and um, right now, uh, again, uh, in this position, um, okay, I'm not going to ask you what would you play, but I will explain a few things. Basically, in this position, again, white had to somehow uh, realize that um, white is worse. White is worse, at least maybe not on let's say, uh, from human let's say, point of view only, uh, but it's still worse, it's, uh, you know, black is, black is initiative, black is trying to push here for a win, white is on the defensive side. That's why after move rook a1, white was supposed to play move f4, and, uh, you know, it's no better, no, no better timing for this move than now. Uh, simply idea of f4 is to, first of all, simplify the position a little bit, uh, and the second thing is to simply go for, uh, I mean, go for activation of this e2 rook, maybe idea of rook e7 in the future, maybe. Uh, basically, uh, we need to somehow with white uh, activate those rooks, open files for those rooks, because if you look at bl black rooks right now, they're extremely active. Pawn f3 could be a target, rook only one is also very active, but white rooks are not doing anything, they're just kind of stuck there and they're not doing anything. That's why f4 at least opens the e-file uh, for this rook. 
and uh, you know maybe if the trades follow uh, maybe this rook comes to g3 maybe this one comes to e7 there is some counterplay involved in those rooks of course uh, black still can push a little bit but objectively let's say after rook f1 uh, rook e4 uh, the game should somehow end with a, with a, with a draw uh, with, with best defense which of course uh, is not granted that would happen during the game um, but still uh, you know um, white black is still a little bit pawn structure so it gives some at least practical chances in the game however Janowski in this position uh, played move rook b2 an idea of rook b2 is also understandable but it's unfortunately for white here wrong idea of uh, rook b2 is to play b4 and c5 and uh, because immediately b4 would have been met by probably move like rook b1 and for uh, attacking this pawn and if b5 again rook a1 and both pawns are right now uh, stuck there they're not going anywhere pawn c4 is a, again uh, potentially a weakness so uh, this wouldn't lead anywhere uh, therefore uh, he tries to play move rook b2 to play support rook b4 and then play c5 but this unfortunately for him doesn't work right now uh, just king h7 there is no need to rush things b4 uh, idea is to play move c5 uh, but it simply again doesn't work just king g6 suddenly this king on g4 is uh, in some sort of maybe not maybe not really not maybe not just yet but it, it is getting into some mating net uh, in some lines uh, because you know it comes into h5 check pawn on f3 then it's also sort of loose this king doesn't really belong on g4 that's why this idea of king bring king bringing this king to g4 without following up with f4 was bad uh, you know if he will if you play king h3 king g4 play f4 if not just keep your king on g2 um, so um, in this position after c5 uh, right now this pawn d5 becomes extremely weak and perhaps uh, what uh, Janowski missed after rook d1 uh, c takes d6 c takes d6 um, rook, if rook d6 there is b5 and pawn d5 is anyway lost and we cannot uh, after this we simply protect pawn b5 and uh, black wins a pawn and black is, has winning position also uh, and if b5 at first then after rook takes d5 rook d6 seemingly this pawn b6 is lost um, but unfortunately there is rook d4 king h3 and d5 and uh, the spawn uh, one b6 is guarded by rook on from f6 and black simply wins the game again so uh, c5 is not possible therefore after moving king g6 position is already very shaky probably is already lost uh, so let's see but let's see how uh, rubinstein uh, converted it uh, because it's still seemingly not easy rook b3 uh, supporting spawn f3 makes perfect sense but right now uh, rook f5 suddenly this king is getting into more and more trouble right now uh, rook c2 just sort of staying in place uh, rook h1 activating the rook again uh, right now that is rook g5 rook h5 finally uh, you know i mean the point of this play right now by black is gradually put more pressure on on the opponent uh, you know h4 right now is not possible because of mate h5 it's difficult it's getting more and more difficult to make moves here for for white and that's the uh, point because even though if position is objectively you know close to let's say equal or or you know maybe okay maybe here is already black is has huge advantage right but in many positions but even they're supposedly equal if we keep on playing if we could keep making you know some progress and uh, pu putting some more uh, pressure on our opponent uh, there is a possibility that at some point this tension will be pretty much uh, uh, not not possible to uh, withstand and that the basically the the point of you know sort of like um, slowly gradually you know uh, putting more pressure on our opponents and uh, in this end game uh, Rubinstein did, did, did it perfectly so in the game for the four and this was already kind of like I mean a little bit too late finally a four uh, was played but this move should have been played long long time ago right now black simply wins other moves were not saving the, the day either uh, for instance after move c5 also you know following the, this plan uh, you know with open for open open the queen side and activate those rooks somehow uh, this simply fails to to bishop rook g5 king h3 now simply rook h5 and unfortunately after uh, king g2 this is just mate and if king g4 uh, rook takes h2 and again there is also again um, threaten uh, threatened mate in one with h5 so after takes takes 
let's say f4 uh, again we just play can play this king f3 and then king f5 and the end game is simply won for uh, for black there is no need to take on ec5 uh, because then we will spawn on e5 instead we just play, play king f5 ourselves uh, c d c d uh, then if c b c b uh, this is just 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 lost for white so um, really nice uh, here play by um, Rubinstein and again for b f4 uh, but this is also not sufficient uh, to call it takes takes h5 basically right now white has too many weaknesses and they are sort of just falling rook king g3 rook g1 king f2 rook g4 pawn f4 just falls uh, rook f3 takes takes and uh, yeah there was also one okay maybe few moments when uh, whenever um, you know Rubinstein present nice technique rook f3 king d4 and right now very nice move by Rubinstein move rook d3 basically provoking this move b5 trying to get this uh, pawn uh, to uh, you know light square and that, that therefore the c5 pawn break will not be possible uh, still rook f2 the game went on a few more moves king h6 to get out of checks and finally move b5 if rook a2 there will be very nice move right now by black and not rook b4 because rook b4 we met by king c3 rook b1 and rook a7 with some counterplay so the caution is to be you know uh, till the end pretty much because right now uh, what can black do uh, let me ask you guys black to play in this position not rook takes before but what b5 just b5 correct b5 is the move uh, b5 is the move uh, oh. okay. uh, b5 is the move correct and he basically stays b5 king rotates before and the point is that uh, when we switch the move order and so this this simply works uh, b5 b5 uh, takes rook takes before and uh, after king goes anywhere we just take the pawn b5 and we win uh someone asked can you take the pawn uh if you take the pawn as well as what i just said if you prefer king c3 and the rook has to go here and then rook uh, a7 with counterplay yeah we want to basically do win this before pawn with check correct so in the game for b5 uh rook a2 uh, was not sufficient uh, but after rook b5, very nice move by right now uh, by uh, Rubinstein, rook f3. Basically, rook comes back to the f file with idea of cutting the king on the f file, this white king on the f file, and bring this rook to f7. In any time, uh, pawn uh, on 7 will be attacked, rook on f7 will guard it, and then pawns uh, h and g will simply go by themselves with the support of the king. And, and black, black wins. Uh, so in the game for king e4, uh, rook f6, um, no need to go rook f7 just yet, rook f6 is fine, rook a2, but now g5, idea also to play rook f4, and this is what he starts with, rook f4 check, now rook f7, just as I said, and both pawns on the king side simply move forward, there is no way of stopping them. In the game for simply c5, uh, sort of last hope, but this is not sufficient, takes d6, and now very nice move, again rook d7 and uh, the game is just over so the rest is pretty much very nice technique but uh, already uh, not too difficult technique uh, rook d4 king f5 h4 and uh, rook c8 if, if the if, if rook c6 simply king h5 rook b6 rook f4 and rook f2 wins the game as well if rook c8 uh, rook f4 c4 king yeah, uh, king g6, check, finally goes king h5, and simply c3, and uh, yeah, this basically is just lost because rook f3 and we capture h3 pawn, and we have too many pawns that black simply, sorry, white can simply stop. White, um, white is widely resigned here. Uh, so it was a very nice endgame here by Akiva Rubinstein. 
and uh, one of the very important games, let's say, for uh, just history, sort of. I think, the, like in terms of you know the quality, instead of in terms of you know the technique and so on. Uh, all right, so let's look at the next game that I prepared, and uh, the next game, uh, let's which which let's do which. Um, Maybe against uh, Alexander Alheim. It's also a pretty famous game. We are a little interested about the opening, obviously, we are mostly interested about end games. So uh, let's begin our discussion in this moment. So after the opening, uh, yeah, it was a nice grind, yeah. Uh, so here uh, another end game by uh, Akiva Rubinstein uh, versus Alexander Alehein, former world champion. Um, and let's see how Akiba managed to outplay uh, world champion. Uh, I don't know when exactly this game was played. I'm not, uh, don't remember. Uh, and I don't know if at the time Alheim was world champion or, or like contender or what because I, was, I don't remember what when was this game played however uh, Alheim was still Alheim right so um, yes what is much better correct but you know it requires still some technique to uh, to to win this you know because so far everything is well defended everything is well defended pawns on a7 is a weakness I agree pawn defies a weakness as well However, they're both the well defended by rook on d7, and uh, any time the other rook is ready to just join. So, uh, right now, white played move rook ac1, rook fd8, and right now, uh, yeah, what would you play in this position? What would, what would you play in this position? Yes, two weaknesses, but they are all well guarded. Uh, okay, rook c7 suggestion. Uh, any other suggestions? Okay, so here's my question. Why would you play rook c7? Uh, why would you want to trade those rooks? Get king up. Um, okay, so here is what I think. I, okay, I got your suggestions. Let me tell you what I think. In this position, probably there are many moves to have which they you know offer you know huge advantage to white. Uh, but uh, I, in my opinion, if I look at this position, I ask myself which piece needs to be improved the most. And when I look at when I answer this question, the answer is very clear. King on g1 just needs to be improved, brought to the game, and uh, you know we will. And then and then I see what next. Bring the king to the game first, then see what next. That's why here the best move is simply move king f1. This is exactly what uh, Rubinstein uh, did. Uh, rook c7 is possible. I'm not saying it's not possible, but why would you trade rooks? Like, okay, I, I'm not going to, of course, capture. Never going to capture and voluntarily lose the game. I'll just play, play queen e6, king e6 or something. And let's say if you take, I take back. And okay, like uh, you're still not, not doing anything with your king. If you look at this position, uh, you know, essentially by trading those rooks, okay, it's still great, it's still great. The rooks were traded later in the game, uh, you know, it's also, you know, uh, you know, possible, but it is not a good good moment to do it. Like, first bring your king, then see what's going to happen next. So that's why here, after, you know, uh, king f1, uh, I mean, king f1 needs to be played, king e7, okay, king e2. At first, there is no need to rush your decision with rook trades and so on. Rook d6, 
And now uh, Rubinstein uh, played very instructive move. He didn't trade rooks. He made, and this is very instructive in my opinion because his rooks are stronger than his opponent's rooks. They're on the open file. They had he chooses to trade or not to trade. And uh, you know those rooks can go from the queen side, uh, like with rook a3, rook a1, or maybe you can go from the king side with rook h1 idea and so on. And uh, also they can stay on the c file, uh, you know, and make good use of it as well. So basically, he combines various ideas in this in this position. So uh, rook d7 back because already rook a3, rook a1 was a big threat. So rook d7 and now simply king d3. No need to rush with rook c6, rook 7 or anything like that. First bring king to f3, then see what what's going to happen next. So king d3, rook a8. And uh, right now again back uh, rook, back to rook c6. Rook d6. Alekhine wanted to trade to trade the, the pair of rooks, but. Um, Okay, and uh, yeah, in this position, I think Rubinstein made a mistake actually. So uh, let's see what uh, what what uh, what was wrong. Uh, he played move. Uh, okay, maybe it was still, still a mistake, but it was maybe some sort of inaccuracy that uh, was uh, pretty much unnecessary. Uh, in my opinion, it was not necessary at all to trade rooks just yet. Uh, I wouldn't trade rooks myself. Uh, what I would do is basically. Uh, play maybe throw in the one check and then simply go back let's say to c2 or something prepare f3 prepare g4 play play rook a2 maybe if if i can maybe uh play rook from from this side with rook h2 uh you know maybe if open g file let's say after this this open g file play with rook g1 rook g2 also possible or rook h1 rook h6 things like this with more rooks uh, both rooks on the board i think there is uh you know more chances to win this and this was i think the best technique also, uh, engines confirm that, and uh, so, but you know, it makes perfect sense to keep those rooks on the board. In the game, uh, followed uh, not uh, uh, not rook c7 and keeping those rooks on the board, but he played move king d2, and uh, maybe it was sort of time trouble or something. Very understandable because it was move number 34, so very likely move con time control was around 40, so maybe it was time con time time trouble or something. Um, also, we need to remember in, in those days they didn't have uh, increment, so very likely when they had little time, they had really little time. So uh, rook takes c6, uh, rook takes c6, king d7, and uh, right now in the game fold f3, uh, which was again uh, a mistake. Uh, okay, yeah, this was a mistake. Rook turned rooks wasn't maybe such a big mistake, but f3 is definitely a mistake. So right now, basically, in this moment, uh, Alekhine had one of the two chances to save the game. Can you, uh, can you guys find a move right now for Black to save the game? Because there's only one of the few moments that in this game that actually this could have happened. Black to play right now and hold the, and, and, and yeah, pretty much hold. A5 and after rook takes B6. A5 and after what after rook take uh, rook takes B6. Okay, um, so two suggestions, uh, king c7 or a4. So let's see, after uh, a, let's put on the board actually, if a5, because this didn't happen in the game, rook d6, uh, a4, after a4, I would consider that, uh, okay, let me calculate this, this, king c king b6, king c3, king a6, king b4, okay, after this, I think rook a6 wins, because, uh, the point is that after rook takes, you are forced to trade with the rooks, and right now we cannot push because I'm faster to queen my, my pawn. So I have to go king c6, and after this I go king d3, and right now I'm in the in the box or like the, the square, 
and if the king goes to b6 i go king c3 you have to capture this pawn and finally i go king b4 i'm just in time to capture uh, this a4 pawn that's your pawn and your king cannot uh, do anything about it and this pawn and game must be winning it is winning it is winning for pawn and game for for white that's why uh, this move uh, a4 is not good but whatever uh, uh, tahiri shari sartish sneezy sorry if i'm butchering it uh, but uh, yeah king c7 is correct King c7 is correct. Basically, uh, right now rook a6 is not possible because it simply takes takes king b6, right? So this is basically not possible for white. And if uh, and if rook c6, then king b7, and uh, this pawn suddenly uh, there is it's very difficult to stop to stop it's very difficult to stop this pawn. Simply a5 a3 just goes, and uh, you know this extra pawn right now for white is totally irrelevant. Black has sufficient counter playoff by pushing the a pawn. So this was, and this is the game should end here with, with a draw. Uh, but uh, this was the only moment when um, Alekhine could have done that, but um, you know, by some reason he played Rook maybe he was also in time trouble or something. Uh, MJ is enough, all right. Um, Rook E8, okay. Uh, so right now, King D3 back, Rook E7. So uh, basically, uh, just to sum up this moment, you have in general in chess you have two types of defense one's active one's passive and uh, it's very fine balance to find uh, you know uh, to, uh, to figure out which one is correct and basically uh, it just comes i guess with intuition or experience or whatever to basically figure out in what what position which one to apply and there is no kind of like i I'm not not i'm not i'm not, I'm not really aware of uh, of like some method when to use which because it can be some positions the differences can be really subtle and um, it just I don't I don't know any kind of like guidance which when to use which it's just kind of like comes with feeling I guess uh, so um, more you study chess in general the more feeling the more the better intuition you have so that's you know that's the main let's say idea in my opinion how to get better in chess just work more and uh, and yeah Okay, so rook e8 happened, uh, king d3, rook e7, and now finally g4. Basically, uh, right now, uh, as someone said earlier in chat, uh, two weaknesses. So there are two weaknesses, true, pawn a7 and d5, but they are not really like a two separate weaknesses, it's like they're more like a one weakness. Basically, we cannot attack both. You know, like like we cannot attack pawn on d5. We can attack pawn on d7, but we can't really attack pawn on d5 in any way. With king on d7. Uh, you know, we can't. Therefore, we have to create a second weakness on the other side of the board, on the king side. And that's why we need to play move g4 right now to try to create, uh, you know, some weakness on the king side. Uh, g4. And again, for follow the rook e6. And right now, uh, white to what would you play here with white? White to play. Question is, where you trade the rooks or you do not trade the rooks? MJ suggested suggest rook c2. Rook c3. Our rook is better, okay. no trade rook c2 okay so you guys in general don't want to trade i can see and i will tell you what uh if you don't want to trade you play like rubinstein <laughs> so that's generally good news right uh however if you want to play like stockfish uh, you should play rook takes e6 <laughs> which is uh, you know kind of like modern modern chess pretty like uh uh, sort of refutes, not like really refutes, finds new solutions to different types of problems. Uh, just, you know, chess evolves as a game. So pretty much rook takes six wins. And after king six, g takes f5, basically uh, it's just winning, a winning pawn end game. Because after king f5, king goes around, and basically, basically have just extra pawn, essentially, because we have four versus three, because these two, these two black pawns are blocked by one. 
and uh, pen uh, and basically uh, the pawn on b5 stops these two and uh, put the four pawns on the king side just uh, or center and king side uh, win win simply and this may have been kind of like not so clear during the game but the analysis proves that basically this is just winning and if g takes f5 e4 and basically uh, right now if pawns are you know trading traded everything this is just winning again uh, two pawns versus one and if we can play move like e5 then king goes around and uh, we simply uh, yeah, basically we go e5 and then king goes around and the game is just over. Let's say the you know king on some e7 or something, we just go e5. And the uh, king just waits and we just go around with our king. There is no way to, oh, sorry, no, there is no way to stop this king from entering through the h file. And uh, then at some, okay, maybe the king will try to stop this uh, with like, you know, king g6 or something. But, okay, but the point is that those, this pawn blocks these two. So uh, this is not sufficient, uh, you know, um, and so essentially right now, those, the, and a5 never works. a5 never works because we take in and pass out and basically promote first. That's why here after king g6, we can play right now e6 and, you know, deflect this king towards the king center, capture his pawn h7, and, uh, you know, at some point there will be some kind of like outflanking or, or, or sort of or whatever. Let's say this, this, this uh, is an elementary winning pawn end game because after king h6, king h5, there is Zugzwang. King has to go somewhere, king g5, of course, king, king g6, and c simply wins. Again, if, white, if black was in time to, you know, uh, play, you know, a5 or a6, this wouldn't be so easy, but this pawn b5 blocks these two, again, I'm saying, and this is simply, simply winning. So, uh, you know, the new, so new solutions to old problems. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in, what I'm th I was thinking when I was preparing this example is maybe good that Akiba didn't take or take on e6 because it is, wouldn't produce such a uh, you know such a beautiful end game <laughs> that it did. So let's go uh, rook c uh, rook c1. I mean no one can fight off stock, which maybe only lc0, right? <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, uh, rook c1. Uh, but happened in the game. So also, but I want to give you kind of like an example. Well, have general perspective on this. Rook c1 is also a very good move, and uh, in many positions, uh, in many positions, this rook, uh, you know, rook trade. Okay, hold. I'll, I'll take that back. Uh, here, rook e6 wins because it's just forced. It just wins by force for white. However, in, it could be let's say small change in a position when it doesn't work. That's why, uh, okay, you need to calculate. Whenever you transfer the pawn endgame, you need to be absolutely sure. Maybe uh, Rubinstein, I mean, for sure, Rubinstein calculated rook 6 but maybe he was not sure, or maybe he miscalculated something, and that's why he didn't play rook 6 And, uh, you know, in if you are not absolutely, if you are not 100% sure whether rook 6 wins, uh, or, or, you know, then, then just don't trade rooks, because for sure, with rooks on the board, you are clearly better anyway. But without rooks, okay, it's either draw, or 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 you win, or it's a draw, right? So therefore, you have to uh, make a decision, and decision making in chess is kind of difficult sometimes. That's why rook c1 is also a very good practical choice. So we shouldn't just kind of like uh, judge right now Rubinstein by rook c1 because also this move leads to a winning position. Just rook takes six is much faster and easier uh, according to let's say engines, right? But uh, rook c1 is. Uh, also very very good so uh rook e7 follow right now and right now uh, rook h1 we go from this side just as i said rook the rook has possibility of going to swing between king side and queen side and right now goes to the king side king e6 uh, right now back now to e1 uh swinging again now to a1 so this idea this strategy right now by rubinstein uh, playing rook a1 rook e1 and rook h1 and so on this is a very common strategy in uh, such end games. We are not showing yet where whatever uh, we want to do. We are not declaring our intentions. And uh, you know, generally, it's a good strategy because first of all, we can win some time because our opponent will have to figure out whatever uh, you know, whatever we are playing. Some of we are maybe just playing, uh, not playing, playing anything, just playing moves. But uh, you know, we are slowly you know putting some pressure here right now with the attack pawn on a7. 
early attack pawn h7 so there is some pressure on involved you know on black so right now king d6 back to c1 you know like slowly maneuvering uh, this kind of like strategy is uh, you know uh, popular in modern chess i myself employed many games like that and uh, you know it was pioneered by you know such players like rubinstein so king d7 and uh, rook c6 finding uh, rook uh, activating the rook rook f8 and uh, yeah in this position how would you continue here with white how would you continue here with white MJ, yeah, correct, correct. Basically, uh, King has to go around. King has done his job on d3, and now it's time for the King to get to the game through this square. So this is the plan. And totally correct, MJ. Good job. And this is exactly what Rubinstein did. So such long maneuvers, uh, you know, are not, uh, you know, common. And especially the world common like in those days and Rubinstein was sort of like, as I say pioneer uh, again uh, the rule do not hurry there is no need to rush anything there is no need to rush anything the rule of do not hurry applies and uh, for instance I see suggestion uh, of um, GTX F5 and uh, E4 and uh, first of all after GTX F5 I play root takes F5 so basically you are trading the pawns you're allowing black, your black rook to activate. Let's say if I activate my rook, who knows what's gonna happen? You're not gonna go you get e4 because I take with the pawn, the pawn, the pawn here. You are not getting anything with this uh, with gtx f5. And why? Because gtx f5 is premature. It's simply premature. You cannot rush a decision like this by taking this pawn on f5. Um, you know, it's simply premature. That's why. King e2 has to be played. Very good. A very good move by Rubinstein. Uh, rook f7. The, the thing is, let's let's see what happens with rook c8. If, rook, if the rooks are swapped, and uh, right now white wins in the same way just as we discussed earlier because of g takes f6, g takes f5, g takes f5, and e4. Again, this with this wins because uh, if pawns are traded, you know, king e3, king e4, right? Uh, simply, you know, we have winning position. And if white black doesn't take, we go uh, out of our pawn to f e5 and go this way. Just as we discussed earlier, same, same, same end game. So rook c8 doesn't work. That's why uh, rook f7, other hand waits. King f2, king g3, gradually improving our position. Right now we want, we are very close to going this way. Rook e8, attacking pawn e3. Now rook c3, rook comes back. We uh, we want to we want to defend pawn with the rook and go king h4 king g5. So uh, rook e7 followed, and now uh, king h4. So right now if we can get our king to g5, the game will be just over. You know just pawn f5. Okay, g takes f5, g takes f5, king g5. Pawn f5 is a huge weakness. Basically, we get to create second weakness on the king side right now, and that's the that's the main objective here for white. Uh, to create second weakness on the king side. So uh, after king h4, g takes f5, g takes f5 is a threat. So black plays with h6 to stop, uh, you know, uh, king uh, king g5. But right now pawn on h6 is also becoming a weakness. So right now, uh, we, uh, I mean, yeah, uh, it's not as safe uh, as it was on h7 because pawn on h7 supports this pawn structure, right? Uh, this pawn structure is, let's say, more solid rather than this pawn, uh, you know, king h4, h6, this pawn structure. Pawn g6 could be vulnerable, but for now we cannot get to this pawn, right? Because pawn e3 is hanging. So it makes sense to play with king g3, followed by king f2, back, and then rook c6, maybe at some point. 
or uh, maybe we bring the king back to f2 and then somehow go rook c1 rook h1 because pawn h7 is also not guarded uh, as well as was here one example one of some of the example lines that i'm thinking about right now say rook e8 let's say uh let's say take taking f2 just for example and they say uh, rook e7 of course there was rook a3 on the way but just for example i want to just show example line let's say rook goes here uh, to attack this pawn let's say king d6 already loses to rook c6 right if rook king d8 we can go right now this way attack this pawn from here if this uh, rook goes here we are winning with rook h5 because this pawn is a weakness as well so only move is to play move rook e6 and again we can just wait it out we, we can bring this king here first and then we can see where go rook h5 or rook a1 because we can also remember that rook a1 attacks pawn on a7 it's not easy to defend it too black has to have always raised this move because let's say rook king d7 already loses to rook a1 and the white wins right so it, this is very 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 uh difficult position already so in this position after uh, king g3 alejand decided to play with h5 and uh, right now uh, i think that uh, Alec, uh rubinstein made a somewhat inaccurate move uh, because rubinstein played with king h4 and king h4 uh, is gives black some hope to save this by after takes 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 and this uh, in this position you know the rook can get activated uh, through h file and similar thing, there was something similar in the game so we will discuss it in a second uh, something similar very similar happened in the, in the game uh, so uh, i don't want to discuss this particular position but uh, you know instead of king h4 we was i wanted to say what was the most uh, was the most uh, you know the, the simplest uh, to way, way to win simply takes takes king h4 basically again just create this weakness for f5 attack on h5 the game is just decided let's say if rook j rook g7 if rook h7 uh, we can just uh, very likely capture his pawn f5 because if h4 king f5 h3 can you just go rook c1 and we are in time to stop this and uh, then we are winning uh, also we can start with, with like rook g1 or something also as possible uh, but yeah simply taking on f5 is sufficient and uh, also we can start with move like rook g6 or something king g6 i mean anything wins and if rook g7 trying to activate this rook from g1 trying to maybe go for rook b1 uh, we need to remember that uh, there are also ideas of attacking spawn with rook a3 but the first king h6 let's say analyze uh, rook, rook, rook g2 because if this rook goes here not only we have rook a3 but also we have king g6 right so if let's say rook starts try to keep this king cut here we can go for rook a3 and attack the spawn and we are simply simply winning so uh, in the game for king h4 right now uh, h g4 was getting some chance in the game for how rook, rook h7 and right now again king g5 was a mistake uh, in the game uh, which happened in the game uh, this was supposed to be played and again king g5 some just like sim just as we discussed right the same position leading to the same position white wins however king g5 was played and uh, here right now uh, alekhan had a chance right now alekhan present a great defense so this is what i wanted to uh, mention here Alekhine understood that uh, he cannot just wait. He, can, he had a great feeling for dynamics, and he understood that in such an endgame, where he's being, you know, slowly but surely, you know, uh, outplayed, he cannot just wait and wait for, he can just wait here and uh, not do anything, because then white strategy will be simply sufficient. So he has to fuck out of some counterplay, and he did that by playing takes, takes, taking everything, in hg4, and right now rook h1. And the idea is to play after king g5 to play move rook b1. And honestly, according to my analysis, uh, I think that uh, I think that uh, this uh, position should be drawn with correct defense. However, uh, you know this, this, that's why this move king g5 was a big mistake. You should have taken on, on g5 earlier, uh, like in this position, g takes the five was winning uh, in this position. Uh, okay, even best make mistakes. <laughs> But nonetheless, there was a lot of there's lots to learn from those mistakes because this gave uh, opportunity to save the game with rook b1. And right now, after uh, rook a3, uh, okay, king g6 also is possible, but then rook takes b5 is extremely sharp. Who knows which part, which pawns are faster, these two or maybe f1? I'm not sure. And according to analysis, 
probably they are equally fast, <laughs> so this should be drawn. And um, Zination Solitude Darish. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello, Zination. Um, okay, Rook A3. So that's why uh, Rubin should play with Rook A3. And right now, this is the final puzzle of the, of the of this evening. How Black can save the game right now? Play better than Alejheim. Thank you. I'm, I hope you I hope you like it. Uh, chess king. Uh, yes, correct. King e6. Correct. King e6. Activity. 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 Um, we need to activate the king because with our active king, uh, we can only with active king, only with active pieces we can save this. Uh, that's why uh, rook g1, for instance, was a huge mistake because right now I go king f6. This king is sort of stuck there. And uh, rook takes b5 is also not sufficient uh, because after rook takes a7, uh, you know, uh, this, let's say, king e6, now we take, and this rook is also passive, we just play f5 next. And that's why the point is, after king e6, to after rook a7, meet this uh, rook a7, rook g1 check, and hit this king, and then go king f5. Uh, if, let's say, if possible, or after king h4, you can even go rook e1, attack this pawn e3. Uh, that's why king e6 uh, was uh, the best move, which uh, was missed by Alekhine. He played rook takes b5 and uh, rook takes a7, the game is just simply over because king e6, king g6. Uh, the rest is pretty much simple. Uh, just pawn goes forward, there is no way of stopping it. Again, this king is cut right now on the 7th rank. Important idea uh, of in end games, you know, cutting the king on a, you know some rank. And uh, right now this king, black king is cut on the 7th rank. Right now, and can get to eight rank to stop this pawn, and simply is going forward by itself. King h7, rook f3, just f7. Uh, king comes to f8. Okay, they repeated like a few times, and finally king gets to uh, f8. One second. And uh, finally, after rook d1, and you know there's just no way of stopping this pawn. The king comes to e8, rook d1, king d8, uh, rook f1. Just check. Now king back. Uh, the building the sort of bridge with rook e7 check. Uh, I mean after rook e1, rook e7. Rook e7, rook e1 check, rook e7. Rook e7 anyway. And now very nice move rook e7. This is the final move of the game and I really like it. I just really want to show this till the end because this rook e7 is just a class. It's just really classy move. Not allowing any the smallest counterplay, like the, even like the shade of counterplay, nothing. Rook c7 cuts king right now again on the c5 right now, and uh, the pawn promotes the queen. Alekhine resigned. There is nothing he can do, he just resigned, and um, yeah, the game is over. So, yeah, that's uh, one of few of the end games of Akiba Rubisha that I wanted to share with you guys today. Uh, there were there are lots of more, of course. There are lots of more. I had more prepared, but uh, you know, it's just time is limited. <laughs> so I showed the, the most, let's say, famous games, or like against, let's say, Lasker, right? And um, Nimsovich, I no Nimsovich, I didn't show. Uh, maybe another day I will show. Uh, you know, against Alkhain, this one, and uh, against Janowski, and, and maybe some other, some some, other, some more I think I shown but anyway I had more prepared but uh, you know I think there's already plenty of material <laughs> and uh, I think there is lots of to learn from those games and even though as I say you know Rubinstein made many mistakes uh, you know modern engines sh show it right but it doesn't really matter for let's say qualitative let's say or like you know f for learning purpose even if he can just improve on he, uh, his strategy or like his play you can only learn from this so uh, but anyway um, you know the way he was playing the ideas that he was inventing let's say you know the idea of king e2 king f2 king g3 king h4 king g5 it's a very long plan and uh, of course you know you guys come up with this quickly uh, which is great but at the time it was completely you know new 
community knew, right? There was not so many games that any game theory wasn't that developed, and uh, such ideas are just classic, and it's very good to know such end games. All right, so thank you guys for today, and uh, I will see you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So, um, yeah, thank you, and take care, and see you next time.